Hey everybody, welcome back. Today is going to be the next update for these Super Tunias. Uh, it is June 25th, 2023. And we had, uh, for the entire last week, pretty much a bunch of monsoon rains where for, I would say for five days in a row, we didn't see the sun and each day had a downpour, which knocked off tons and tons of flowers. Uh, as you can see, some of the rain pushed some of the growth down. So there's a bare spot there, but it actually looks way better than it did even just two days ago, because it's all growing back in. But it's just a part of the process. So when you see, you know, some weeks, they don't look as good as other weeks. It's usually because of rain, but it's, it, that's how the plant cleans itself. So a lot of the old flowers fall off. I sprayed everything down last week with some insecticide. Gonna do that again today after the sun goes down. Uh, can't really spray this one because there's a bird nest in it. That's how I noticed the birds love them this year. Last year, I didn't have any problems with birds. This year, the birds are everywhere. One of the reasons why might be because I have the drip system and I no longer have to go up here twice a day trying to hand water them and disturbing everything. So I think it's made a nice spot for the birds. So other than this area right here, everything is filling in really nice. They're just about, it looks like they've already made contact. I've already been trimming back the bottoms and they're about to be touching the hedges again. Uh, ho hopefully they'll look great for 4th of July. So let's hope that there's no more bad rains. Here's the uh, railings. They look the nicest so far. Um, again, sprayed these down because it was this box right here that actually had aphids on it. So we're gonna have to treat it again this weekend just to make sure. Look, I probably can't get rid of all the aphids, but if we can just keep them in control so that the plant doesn't suffer that's really the whole point. Uh, you can see where the rain did some damage right here, knocked a lot of flowers off. So they're gonna, it's all gonna fill back in nicely. Just take some time, about a week, and it'll be back to looking in its best shape. I'll take you up top here. I've been trimming the back every couple of weeks because one, it's easier to get access if I have to for spraying, but two, there's no point in the plant wasting all its energy spilling over the back where nobody can see it. So I just come by and I, I cut, kind of keep it nice and uniform. And that means if I need to get in there, I can get in there. As you can see, another bird was trying to make a nest right here. And you can kind of see that in all of them. You'll see some areas where there was clearly, you know, birds trying to get in. Um, this one, no. Also notice there's some tree frogs that stay in there for like the entire uh, season. So it's become like this little habitat for nature. You got birds, you got tree frogs, unfortunately aphids, but that's just how it works. I also have been noticing one or two beetles that crawl on the flowers and eat the flowers. That's new for this year. I have, I didn't, I never saw that before. So that's just, again, another challenge. At, uh, another challenge in growing so many super tunias is one of the reasons that they look so full like this is because there's six of them in a box that are barely spaced out, maybe six inches apart, but they should be spaced out about 18 inches apart. But, uh, it just makes it so that there's so much foliage. It's hard to, it's hard to keep track of everything and make sure that, you know, there's no insects on it and trying to keep it clean. It's just too difficult. Uh, so everything's looking good. I would say uh, not really m too many signs of mold. I have seen some mold. Usually it's on the old flowers. So if, um, if you look at like some of these flowers here that die that kind of hang on for a while then they fall off but inside of the box when flowers die 
they kind of stay in there and they and they kind of grow some mold on them so uh, that could spread so you want to make sure you spray some fungicide I'm also gonna do that today which I've never done before I've never sprayed fungicide on super tunias, so I'm gonna try that today coming over here again this box is starting to bounce back from all that rain you can see all up in there that's all new flower buds that are coming out and if you remember this box here to the left it's gonna look way different that's because it finally fell forward on its own it was crawling all the way up the window all that growth fell forward and that's why there's no flowers there so that will eventually bud up with flowers but again this year i wanted to take a hands-off approach to everything so other than a little bit of the trimming on the backs i'm letting nature take its course and just seeing what these do and i'm just going to try and spray them for pests and that's about it um so that's as you can see one of the little pieces is still standing up but this was all up there at one point and it finally had to come down so fell down uh, actually it fell down last weekend after I filmed the video last weekend I came out later that afternoon and it was down and uh, so it's interesting to see how that goes it covered up a lot of the flowers it kind of folded in half like a taco it's kind of funny but um, tons of growth as you can see what I've also been doing is I look underneath I'll kind of get my hand underneath, like uh, between the flowers and the and the uh, the planter box. I'm looking for any dead growth that's looking moldy, and I try and cut it away. So I'm active. Uh, I guess the moral of the story is I'm actively trying to stop the spread of mold because I noticed last year the mold was so bad that it actually kills. It gets on the flower buds before they open, and it like pretty much kills your flowers before before they even bloom. So today uh, is going to be 90, tomorrow is going to be 91 degrees. So need to, again, still been watering them twice a day. Uh, so each, each plant has a dripper, giving it a half gallon of water per day each. So um, that's pretty good. I can control that. I can beef it up if I want to and give it more water. Um, next weekend i'll probably i'm not going to upload a video until fourth of july which is a tuesday so the next video you're not going to see for about nine days or eight days depending on when i upload it and i'm going to have all the american flags in the boxes it'll look really nice and i guess we'll take a look down from see how it looks from the street There you go. That's what it looks like today. Again, there was a lot of damage from rain, but as you know, is when you when you come far away from the from the flowers, it all starts to look uniform, and it's hard to make out, you know, which areas are missing a lot more than other areas. But uh, you can see there's an area where again a lot of flowers fell off, and those are the, the red flowers, so they don't. Again, next year I'll probably do something different about that. I said in the last video, I'll try and pick colors that are within the same type of shade. Same thing over there, there's a red in the middle, a black cherry. And then over there is definitely the worst because everything fell forward. But what's nice about these videos is the reason why I, I started making these videos is I wanted, I was trying to research super tunias and I wanted to find videos like this and I couldn't find any about all the you know the good bad and the ugly of growing tons of super tunias in a, in a window box and all the things you have to deal with that you know you might not see in a magazine picture or in a really nice you know spruced up image of you know what they look like on the best day of the year but these things will grow you know all the way I planted them April 15th and here we are the last week of June and they're gonna keep going and going until really the first frost. Um, last year, I cut them out by September, but they were already doing bad. I wasn't treating them for any mold last year. 
I was barely treating them for insects. I'd only spray some, uh, it's called BT for the caterpillars, but the, the, the budworms, as they say, they were going crazy. All the leaves, all the flowers had holes in them. The mold was crazy and I was watering by hand. If anyone is thinking about doing window boxes in general, especially the railings are one thing, but when it comes to hand watering, you have to go inside the house and water through the window or pull a hose up or over there I had to pull up a ladder. And the best thing to do, if you wanna change the game, is you're gonna to have to get a drip system. And again, I'll, I'll show you that drip system up here. And here it is again. If you wanna, if you wanna really change the game about how you're fertilizing and how you're watering, this is it right here. Um, as you can see, I have some fertilizer actually in the line right now. That's why it's that deep, that deep color, but the system's off. And this is what just for me changed the game. I, I've done my whole life, I've done hand watering. And to come over here and just hit a button and specify how much time, how much fertilizer, it, it really is, it's almost like having a cheat code at, at gardening, especially when it comes to just growing ornamental flowers for their looks. It really is. And it's cut down on the amount of water that I use, which is good for your water bill. But what it also does is it doesn't make a watery mess everywhere. So you don't have water splashing because last year I was watering twice a day, right? With a two gallon watering jug. This window box alone would take about 12 gallons of water a day, hand watering. And I was splashing water all over. So it was always creating a moist environment for mold and just making things terrible for the plant. And so the drip system, not only is it the easiest way to care for these plants, but, and it's also gonna be the cheapest when it comes to water savings, but it's gonna be the just so clean and easy for you to no longer have to worry about watering through the windows, dragging a hose all the way through the whole uh, front of the house. So if, you, if you're really thinking about doing these, I mean, I couldn't see why the drip system wouldn't be your go-to. Um, anyway, so that's going to be it for this video. And next video is going to be nice and exciting. Hopefully there's not too much rain because that'll be the 4th of July video. And I might try and crank up the fertilizer, maybe like twice as extra, just to see what they'll grow like over the next week. Hopefully not too much rain, like I said, so they don't get damaged. And tune in next time. See you then.